Hello, this is Mighty Owl. <laughs> Smells tasty. What is that? <gasps> s'mores! I love making s'mores. What about you? Guess what? Each time you make s'mores, you're performing science. And no matter how crazy that sounds, it's true. When we take a marshmallow, put it on a stick and warm it on the fire, well, warming the marshmallow increases its temperature, which is also called heating. Fire, after all, is a source of heat. Can you think of something else that gives off heat? What about when you wake up in the morning and you prepare your toast? You heat up the bread with the toaster. Exactly. Other sources of heat are electrical appliances, such as ovens, hair dryers, and irons. And of course, we have the sun. That warms up our whole planet. Especially if you're in the desert where it can get to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Although, did you know that the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth was in Libya? It was 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that is way too hot. Just hearing how hot that is makes me thirsty. I need to cool off with a bottle of water. But how can you cool down a bottle of water? Well, we could put it in the fridge or add ice. Both of these would reduce its temperature and cool it down. A good example of a cold place that can work the same way as a fridge is Antarctica. Temperatures there can be as low as minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Did you know that there's a 30-30-30 rule there? Basically, it says that when the temperature is below 30 and the wind is 30 miles per hour, human skin can freeze in 30 seconds. In fact, Antarctica is far too cold. I don't think any of us have enough layers for a place like that. Whether we heat a marshmallow on fire or cool down a drink with ice, both heating and cooling can cause some visible changes. Some of these changes are reversible, and some are not. Sounds interesting. Let's explore a little bit more together. Imagine you're at the beach on a hot day and you get an ice cream. But it's so hot that your ice cream starts melting. The heat from the sun melts your ice cream into this smoothie-like type of liquid. Well, that's a bit of a bummer, isn't it? However, if you put it back in the freezer, what do you think will happen? It'll freeze. Exactly. The liquid smoothie will turn into solid ice cream again. Now this kind of change is called a reversible change or a change that can be undone. And that means that your ice cream can go from frozen to liquid and then back to frozen again. Can you think of other examples? How about a stick of butter? If you heat it up on the stove or microwave, it'll melt, right? But if you put it back in the fridge to cool, it'll go back to being solid butter again. And what about water? If you put a pot of water on the stove and heat it up to above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, liquid water changes into steam, which is a kind of gas. If you put a lid and cover the pot of water, you'll see that little droplets of water appear on the lid. And that's because the steam touches the cold surface of the lid, loses its heat, and turns into water again. And that is called condensation. Well, what if we take water and put it in the freezer, which is always 32 degrees Fahrenheit or colder? What do you think will happen then? Precisely. The water will turn into ice. It'll freeze. It'll turn from liquid to solid. That is mighty cool. Now, not all changes are reversible. Well, let's find out what I mean. If you crack an egg into a frying pan, the heat will make the liquid substance in an egg turn solid. But when you put it in the fridge to cool it down, it'll remain a solid egg. Just cold and not that yummy as it would have been if it were hot. A change that cannot be undone is called non-reversible. 
Like the egg, when it gets very hot, it cooks, but you can't turn it back into its original egg in the shell, no matter how much you cool it down. Can you think of another example? But what about if you heat up paper? It'll burn, and then what? It'll become dark ash, and it won't ever go back to the white piece of paper you started with, will it? How about clay that you may have seen made into pottery? If you make something with clay, you put it in a hot kiln to bake. When it cools down after baking, it won't be clay anymore. You'll have a hard and breakable piece of pottery. And one of the coolest non-reversible changes is with sand. If sand gets heated to a very high temperature, like getting struck by lightning, it'll turn into this gooey liquid that looks like magma from a volcano. And when it cools completely, the sand will turn into glass. And there's no way to turn that glass back into sand. Whether it's heating s'mores or freezing ice, both heating and cooling are very important parts of science. Heating and cooling cause reversible changes, like turning from liquid to solid and back to liquid again, or from liquid to gas and back to liquid again. And when you think about all the science involved in this, it's pretty cool. But heating and cooling can also cause non-reversible changes. Meaning sometimes if you heat something up, it'll never look the same again. And now that we understand a little more about reversible and non-reversible changes, let's move on to the next mighty video.